Hello, indie gaming fans. Who doesn't love a good genre mashup? I'm the ex-hardcore gamer, and today I'm gonna be talking about Zombie Rollers, Pinball Heroes. So what exactly is getting mashed up here? We're talking classic pinball mixed with zombie defense and, of course, because it's 2022, a roguelike. So while you start with only one character, as you progress through the game, you do unlock more that you can play as and each one does have a slightly different storyline to go along with them. So yes, while there is some variety to what the storyline can be, they're all very thin and don't really add much to the gameplay. It's really just an excuse to get you to click around and play some more battles. If you need a deep, well-crafted storyline to keep you going and playing through a game, this is not going to be the game for you. You start off as a fighter who has no memory and doesn't really understand what's going on in the world around him, but you can also unlock being a penguin who somehow gets transported to the human world, or even a musician who's just looking to get more fans. The story is a bit front-loaded that you see more of it as you start your run with whichever character that you pick, and maybe a bit more dialogue whenever you're dealing with bosses, but for the most part, anything that can be considered story will just be you running into random elements as is common with roguelikes, and they'll give you some options which will either give you a positive or negative outcome. Anyone familiar with these games will recognize the ability to be able to run into maybe a campfire with some bandits around it, maybe a merchant, or even a cursed treasure chest. Obviously, map exploration to just have random events is not going to be the entirety of the game. The real meat of it is that you also are going to run into zombies, and that's where the battles come into play. This isn't going to be like a JRPG where you have these random battles of enemies that can't be seen until you run into them. You will clearly see where the zombies are on the map before you get to them, and it will give you a difficulty rating to see how well you're going to be able to do in it. The battles are all handled in a pinball style game where you launch the ball into the middle of the battlefield and use your flippers to keep them going to take out all of the zombies. Instead of having the usual pinball mechanic of having a set number of balls to be able to try to do your best, now you have a life bar which gets depleted as you have things like enemies hit your plungers or your ball goes out of play. This life bar depends on so many different factors and it can be leveled up as with any of the other stats that you have. Also, knocking the ball out of play is not as easy as it sounds as you don't have the usual side gaps that a pinball machine will have and the flippers are rather large so getting the ball in between it actually can be really tough. This unfortunately brings me to one of my first complaints about the game where at first it just seems way too easy. Easy. I'm not going to say that the game stays easy, but it's really not all that much of a challenge either. You can go quite some time before you have any damage done to you and you're just breezing through a whole bunch of the battles. By the time the game starts getting challenging, you might even, dare I say, be bored of the game at that point. A well-made RPG should be designed so that the leveling up will make it so you can take on more challenging enemies instead of just making the game easier so you can continue on. Unfortunately, with the pinball heroes here, it's all about making it easier and you just start breezing through levels. Not only do your stats go up, but you also unlock more abilities that get stronger that make it so that you're just crushing through them. If you spend too much time exploring the map instead of trying to find the exits that take you to the bosses, there will be a plague that starts infesting all the different places, and as you walk through those spaces, they're going to do damage to you. I mention this because I feel like I had more damage done to me from that than the actual battles themselves. The majority of the time that my runs came to an end, it was because of this plague where by the time I got to a boss, I didn't have enough health to take them on. Now you might say, okay, but that means that you didn't play well enough and that is the challenge, and sure, you're right. But anytime I made sure that I did plan accordingly, I would just breeze right through the boss no matter which one was spawned. These maps are randomly generated, but are designed in a way to encourage you to explore to find more chests or other things to power you up. But I found that I wasn't really encouraged that much because if I just went right to the boss, I'd be able to beat him no problem, and trying to get these stronger things is what would lead me to die. It's just I feel like the game should be designed where it should actually encourage me to try to explore more, and instead it's encouraged me to just try to rush through things. 
and I just don't feel that that's a great balance that any kind of roguelike should have. But in the end, all of that is moot because there is a major flaw with the gameplay too here, and that is the pinball physics themselves. I'm not expecting any kind of major true pinball simulation here because it's not a true pinball game, but I would feel that there should at least be some consistency to the physics. All too common in the game, the ball will just go in a very different direction than you think it will, even though there's an indicator that shows which direction it's headed, and the speed of it will just change and just start going really quickly and then stop on a dime at your flipper. And it just makes it really hard to have any kind of strategy and just seems a little bit more random. After playing for a bit, I did get a better handle on it, but at the same time, I still felt like for the most part, it was just a matter of just keep the ball in play instead of really trying to aim for anything specific. Eventually, it would go where it would need to go and I would take the enemies out and move on to the next level. It's not like a real pinball machine where you can learn lines because the levels are going to be different depending on where you're at. So each battle basically basically boils down to you just trying to keep your ball in play, which as I mentioned before is pretty easy to do, and earning enough energy to spam out your abilities to then just take out the enemies. There's not a lot of strategy, there's not a lot of tension, there's not a lot of challenge, so why play it? So let's say you disagree with me on the gameplay and you're actually enjoying it. You might be wondering how much there is to actually do in the game. Well, there's four different worlds to go through, and as you unlock everybody, you're going to have 10 different heroes to select from. Each run is going to be different, and obviously each character has their own style and abilities. And eventually, after completing the game, you'll also unlock harder difficulty levels. The developers themselves state that this is a new and improved version of the original Apple Arcade game, and I have not played that one, so I can't directly compare it but I can say that the graphics do look like that they have its origins in a mobile game. They're definitely passable and have a nice cartoony look, but there's not a ton of detail and it's certainly not going to push your hardware. Not even talking requirements, the recommended video card is something that came out all the way back in 2014 and wasn't even a top of the line video card, so pretty much anybody who's bought a card since then will be just fine and be able to run this game without any issues. When it comes to the sound department, everything is very uninspired as well. There's no spoken dialogue, it's all on-screen text, and the music and sound effects don't stand out at all. I found myself just turning it off and just wanting to listen to my own music instead. Fans of the mobile original may be happy to see some of the improvements that were made in this PC port, but for me, I just found that this was a game that had great ideas with unfortunately horrible execution. I really wanted to like this game, but just couldn't find myself being able to have much of an enjoyment at all while playing, and that makes it really hard for me to recommend it to anybody. One can hope that either there will be some improvements through updates or maybe a full-on sequel that will really improve the gameplay. <laughs> With all that negativity aside, it's time to thank our indie warriors. Bill T, Christian Cruz, Kevolo, Mitchell Hall, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Adriana Amato, CJR, C Coil, Skeptism, Haley, Julian Colbus, Jen Rose, Jesse, CPM, Bunny, JRSC8, Ray Lynn, Marky e. Mint, Dave Hart, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle. Eric, PSE, King of the Hatch, Carmine Red, and Larkison. Thank you for all of your love and support for us here at iDream of Indie, as well as indie gaming in general. If anybody else would like to join them, all the information is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, enjoy gaming.